Hello and thanks for coming to check this out. So we are going to make this clock with replicators and shapes and then we're going to use behaviors to animate the second hand and make sure that it has that little jiggle as it hits each point. Uh, so before we get started, if you have downloaded the project file, then you'll have all of this clock face and the hand ready to go. But I am going to start from the beginning and just to show you how easy it is to make the clock face and the hand. And then we'll get into animating everything. So um, if you check the description, I'll let you know what part to jump forward to if you want to skip everything else. Um, also, the sound file, you can just drag that into your project from the finder or import it. And it should be working just fine. If you play the project, the sound effect should kick in. Okay then, so let's start from the beginning and make the clock and the hands. I'm just starting the project with this white color solid in this background group here. Now I'll add two new groups. I'll call this group here clock and this group here numbers. I'll drag the numbers group into the clock group. And then I'll select the text tool and click into the canvas. Just going to enter the number 12 and change the font color to black so that we can see it. I'm using Avena font, by the way, if you want to follow along with the same font. I'm going to adjust the size to 132. Then I'm going to duplicate this number 12 and I'll come into the inspector into text format and down here I'm going to change that to say 1 and then I'll duplicate again and change it to say 2 then I'll duplicate again change that to 3 and duplicate one more time and change it to 11 then I'm going to close the numbers group and turn it off. We'll come back and use those later. All right, I'm going to add one more group now. And I'll call this the group the face. I'll drag that group into the clock group. So now we'll make the uh, points for the minutes, uh, sorry, for the seconds and the hours. To do that, we'll just use the line tool. So I'm gonna grab the line tool holding down shift I'm going to drag from top to bottom to leave a line um, my colors preset here to blue so go with anything that you like I'm going to rename this shape as seconds then I will come into the geometry section here in the inspector and we'll set 0.1 for Y at 15 and 0.2 for y at minus 15. Now I'm going to duplicate this shape and rename it as hours. I'll come into properties and just drag the x position over so we can see them. I will change the color to something else. I'll come into the shape styles section and I'm going to set the start cap to none and the end cap to none and then we'll come into geometry and double these values so 30 and minus 30 okay next we want to grab the second shape and you can use this command here or the hotkey L on your keyboard so we've just made a replicator with our seconds point shape. I'll just turn off the hours shape for now. So in the inspector, we want to set this shape to circle, the arrangement to outline, the points to 60. Then come down here and check this box here, align angle. We'll set the radius to 450. And in the inspector here, properties, I'm just going to reset the X and Y position. I'm going to name this replicator as 
seconds. Then I'm going to duplicate it, rename it as hours. So we're looking at this uh, copy of the replicator here and note down here in this section, the source is our seconds shape that we made. So to change this replicator's look, we're going to drag in the hours shape that we made before into there. Okay, and then we want to come and change the points from 60 to 12. So now let's add an outline to the clock face. I'll select the face group. Come and grab the circle tool and I'm holding shift and option as I drag a larger circle into the canvas. And then I'm going to come to properties and reset the X and Y position. I'll come into shape geometry and set that to 490. And then I'll come into the style section and delete the fill, take the fill away, and reduce the width until it looks uh, nicer. Okay, so how's that? Around about 11 or let's say 12. Okay, so now we can add our numbers. So let's turn the numbers group back on and I'll open it up. Just going to select each number and drag them up to where they need to be. Just close these groups up. Okay, I'm going to now select the face group and just add a new group. And I'm going to call this the hand. And I'll drag that group into our face group. So now we're going to add another line and then distort that into becoming our seconds hand. So grab the, make sure the hand group is selected and come and select your line tool. And let's drag a shape. So starting from about here and hold shift and drag down, come somewhere past the number three and let go. I'm going to name this shape as hand and I'll give it another color, set it to red. And then I'm going to choose anchor point from my menu here, or you can right click on the shape and choose it from this menu. And I'm going to drag the anchor point down to around here, somewhere near the three line. And I'll shift S to select the shape. And just to be sure it's lined up with this point here, I'll come into the properties and set the Y value to zero. And while I'm here, I'll just click on the hours replicator and the seconds replicator just to make sure they're all lined up. If they're not all lined up right, then the more we animate the second hand, the more the second hand will become out of alignment. Okay, so now we want to change the shape of the second hand. Uh, so I'm just going to turn off everything else so we can focus on that. All right, I'm going to use the command shift, uh, sorry, command spacebar to zoom in on my canvas and the command, uh, sorry, just the spacebar to give me the hand so I can drag down and see things. So uh, I'm going to select the hand shape and I'm going to right click on it and choose this option here, distort. I'm going to grab this top corner here and carefully drag it toward the middle and grab this one and do the same. Drag it the other way. And then I'll let go. Shift S to reselect it. Bring my canvas back out. I'll just use Shift Z to 
fit the canvas to the screen again. And all right, there we go. We have a shape that we'll do as our clock hand for now. So I'll turn the clock face items back on. And I'll select the hand shape. All right, it's not looking perfect, but it'll do the job for us so we can continue. So our clock face is done the numbers and all the points are ready so now it's time to animate. The first thing we will do is add a spin behavior to this hand so make sure the hand is selected come up here to the behaviors menu come to basic motion spin. Bring your playhead to 29 frames make sure the spin behavior is selected use the I key on your keyboard to trim the behavior to start there, bring the playhead forward by one frame and hit O on your keyboard to trim the behavior to finish there. So our behavior now works for just one frame. In the inspector we want to set the increment to ramped final value, set the spin to minus six. So let's see what we have. Okay, now we want to add the overshoot behavior to give us the vibration, the slight jiggle of the second hand to match the reverb in the sound effect. So make sure your playhead's at uh, one second or one second one frame. Let's bring it to one second. Come into the layers panel, select the hand, come into properties. If rotation is closed, twirl it open. You want to select Z rotation. Choose this menu here, and we're going to add parameter behavior overshoot. So make sure your playhead set one second. Use I on the keyboard to trim it out, uh, to trim it into that point, and then come to one second and five frames and hit O on your keyboard to trim it out. So our overshoot behavior will work over five frames. Then come into the inspector and we want to set this start value at minus 3. The ramp to 5 and that's all we need to do so let's see how that looks. Alright, so what we want now we want this uh, combination of spin and overshoot to repeat every second so to do that we'll just use a duplicate and a hotkey so I'm going to select the spin and shift select to choose the overshoot I'm going to duplicate them bringing my playhead forward to 1 second and 29 frames I'm going to use the shift left bracket hotkeys to move them forward to that point. I'm going to command D to duplicate again and bring the playhead to 2 seconds 29. Shift left bracket, command D to duplicate again, 3 seconds 29, shift left bracket and one more time command D to duplicate then 4 seconds 29. Shift left bracket and let's leave it at that. Let's see what we have. All right. Uh, so just one more thing to do then is let's close up all the groups, select this clock group, come into the inspector, let's increase the scale of the group and let's drag everything down to this bottom left hand corner, to the bottom left, I might scale it down a bit more and have it fit in there. So the general idea here is maybe you could have the animating clock counting down and your titles to promote some event uh, on this side.
So there you go, we have used replicators and shapes to make a clock and then we combined the spin and overshoot behaviors to add some animation to the second hand. That's it, we're done. I hope this was useful for you and thanks for watching.